Welcome to the 10th episode of We Are Not Here To Please You. Okay, um, and our contact info is as follows. You can find us on Twitter at W-A-N-H-T-P-Y and that's the, under that you can find us on iTunes as well. And you find us as well on Stitcher under our complete name, We Are Not Here To Please You. And under the same name, we are as well on Facebook. Yeah. And our email is uh, we are not here to please you at gmail.com. For any suggestions, ideas, submissions. Yeah. And all the previously mentioned things you can find on we are not here to please you dot blogspot dot fi, our headquarter, our watchtower. <laughs> yes, we hit double digits. Here is Raphael, and with me, like always, Artu, hello. We actually reached double digits. I think now we are officially a podcast. <laughs> I suppose so. Uh, and what a better way to, <laughs> to celebrate this whole thing than... With repentance. <laughs> yeah. Last time? Oh dear. By the way, did you see the weird guys that appeared out of nowhere? I don't really remember that happening. I only seen like some weird box appearing and <laughs> people shoving us away from the microphone. Yeah, and then I poured us some more drinks and... Yeah. I think then you relatively quickly passed out. I most likely did. What a terrible, terrible idea it was. Yeah, let's uh, let's empty half a bottle of booze in under five minutes. That's gonna go well. Especially after I listened back to the whole recording. <laughs> what I had, everything that came after half an hour, 40 minutes, I had no <laughs> idea of. And apparently we recorded like hmm, one and a half hours. Yeah. So this time it was exciting to listen to it because I never <laughs> heard that stuff before. <laughs> But you could hear literally every two minutes the shot glasses just being like cling, cling, <laughs> and glasses oh. getting poured, and like, oh my god. I was just sitting like, I stop it, guys. Are you idiots? You're already shit faced, and you keep having shots? You yep. couldn't you couldn't even hear beer cans opening, because yeah. actually we didn't even drink beer. We just kept drinking shots. Yep. We should have known better. Yeah, we're adults. We should know better. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently th- not. Yeah, I think Tia said I gonna reach adult behavior when I'm gonna be around 50. Yeah. That's gonna be her estimate. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fairly close, but... Yeah, sounds mm, right. Yeah. And how did you feel the day after? <laughs> I actually woke up somewhere around under four in the morning and I think one of the first things that crossed my mind was, God damn it, am I going to be complaining about this the next time we fucking record anything because God damn it. And I had the worst headache I've ever had. It just would not go away. You owe it. You can't anymore deal with drinking anymore so well. Yeah, and usually, I mean, you can usually kick the headache by going to bed. The thing is, I was already in bed and I just could not sleep because my head was cracking <laughs> open. Oh. So there. What a brilliant idea. This is how much we suffer for you, our listeners. For your entertainment. Yes. Well, apparently not because <laughs> we cut it that thing really short. Um. Yeah, I think I cut it the whole episode down to like 44 minutes. <laughs> That's where we still kind of kind of made sense and didn't yeah. slur too much. <laughs> the the recording still exists somewhere. We maybe throw that at at some point the alternative outro maybe what we recorded mm. recorded after we were done with the podcast. Yeah. I listened to that first because I wanted to see if it's useful, yeah. but the only thing I could hear was 
At least we can't be sued because we're not actually making any real words. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, so anything we say doesn't really, you know, mean anything. <laughs> no, but I instantly, after I woke up, regretted what we done. Well, my first thing was like, I wake up totally hangover and I was out of painkiller. So I thought like, well, I was so suffering that I thought, well, let's crack open a beer, pour it down, lay back down and hope that headaches stop long enough or get mild enough that you get three, four hours more sleep that you are not okay. dying anymore. I opened the fridge. And there was a cake in my fridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, where the fuck does this piece, the, uh, not even a piece of cake came from? Yeah. Apparently from Carolina. Yeah, yeah. It was leftovers from her Christmas uh, birthday party, and and we gave it to you, so you would you know use it to your benefit when you get back home. So that I don't starve, and that maybe Tia don't get to piss off how pissed drunk I am. <laughs> yeah, but it was. I can't say it in other words. I can't even paint it funny. It was embarrassing. Yeah. That's that's the word I would use as well. I apparently stormed three times into the bedroom while she was sleeping because mm. I had to tell her something really important. Apparently all three times it was the same information. <laughs> yeah, well, what I heard from Carolina was that you were searching for the SD card from our recorder for six times at least before this you managed to... This fucker is small. <laughs> And you had it in your backpack the whole time, and, and it was found there several times as well, but you kind of so, so forgot. forgot that it was there. And Well, basically, we we went on to three bottles of booze, basically. Yeah. Well, not all of them were completely full, but... No, but still. Oh, um, my God, what a fucking huge mistake. Oh, my God. We are not here to in, uh, here to please you. Does not endorse this kind of behavior. Yes, <laughs> but you know what's the worst point of it? Well, that we are not any more young because we could have handled yeah. that. Yeah, well, ten years ago it would have been a different story. Yeah, now I I had hangover for two and a half days from that. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I would have feel kind of queasy for three four hours after waking up, and then you're fit. Yeah. Now you fucking battled it for days. Yeah, it sucks. Definitely. And I guess that's another sign of getting old. That we are complaining about <laughs> problems. Every I, episode. Yes, every time. It's, I'm getting so old and I have these pains and aches and I can't remember shit. And Plus, when yeah. I sit down, I start to make noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, but... <clears throat> Oh. Sorry, all friends and relatives. <laughs> I hope nobody of them listens, but if yeah, I apologize. But luckily, my side of the family are okay with English, but they usually only listen to a few minutes mm. and can't really keep up completely with it. <laughs> so I think I'm in safe ground in that part. So what oh. was the email of your mom again? <laughs> Oh, I got I gonna send her a copy was really on physical and make it a cover. Yeah. Damn it! I should have made the picture of you just falling straight after the recorder went off, falling into bed, and just only really painfully dragging a pillow over your face. I should have made the picture of that and make that the cover for your mom. Mm. Like Merry Christmas. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. I guess this would be the point for some yo your mama jokes, but we're not going to go there. We are adults. Yeah. By the way, I never liked them anyway. Well, they don't really make sense to me and, uh, as well. I mean, Your mama yeah. doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, really. and this should get me so pissed that I want to punch you in the face. Yeah, I guess. Um, oh, it's... why would you do that? <laughs> oh, please. I could never be an actor, apparently. <laughs> Because that was so believable. Like, yeah. All right, maybe we should move on from our complaint section. Well, it was more like a apologizing section to people that had to listen to the us being like that. <laughs> Though it had really good parts in there, so it was mm. actually kind of amusing. Yeah, it wasn't a complete waste. <gasps> 
<laughs> Unlike me, I was completely wasted. Well, luckily we had our future self step in. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> how smart we are in, in the future. Yeah. Well, but uh, how was your Christmas otherwise? Did you have a nice time? Well, it was like, well, nothing to write home about, I'd say. Just, you know, your basic overeating and <laughs> drinking. Couple of presents and some, yeah. Nothing much, really. Yeah, so you went to your parents' place or to Carolina's place? Carolina's parents' uh, summer house or something like that, whatever. Well, that's nice, huh? Yeah, well, it was alright. We get to, got to go to sauna, which was great because this this house doesn't have one. So, and I'm not really a big sauna person anyway, but it's nice once in a while. Definitely, that's what I enjoy when we go to Tia's parents' house. You know, enjoy a nice sweat and a good, mm. nice wooden sauna and mm. shit like that. It's definitely nice to do, especially mm. after all the overeating. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because then you can place your drink on your stomach and it stays there. <laughs> yes, okay. No, but, but it's really a, a really mm. gorge fest. Yeah, yeah, it always is. I mean, like, I, I'm not even sure if I did cut that one out or not from the episode. But I just quickly repeat it, so in case that somebody hasn't heard it, new to it, or I didn't mention it. So my family is Catholic, Christian, yeah, so we really just have this battered fish, fish kinds, mm. four or five kinds, and a pea soup and a fish soup. That's what on Christmas Eve, that's what you get. Right. Well, And so, some so waivers, waivers before we eating, where mm. everybody stands off, and then pretty much almost everybody on the table prays. Mm -hmm. and shit like that you know wow well, well i'm always standing there kind of really awkwardly looking <laughs> down and just try not to offend anybody by not doing it i mean good for them if it makes them happy like my grandparents i know it mm. gives them a warm feeling it mm. makes them happy good for them believe in anything you want as long as you don't hurt anybody oh, yeah. so i'm good with that but after that it's really just the <clears throat> you need really a cough button mm -hmm. No, but uh, it's really just the soup and then the battered fishes, and that's really yeah. pretty, much it, pretty much it. And I think it's because we are Catholic Christians and we are so bad from the inside, our core is <laughs> rotten pure, and we are so sinners and we have to suffer, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's my only explanation why my family... Or, or the, you don't have any tasty animals on the table. Yeah, but we have it on the, on the first day after Christmas Eve, right. so... There comes the good food, but I think it's just really this repentant kind of behavior. <laughs> and then I came here to my first Christmas over yeah. here's parents' house, and they went all out. They had a really good eight kilogram ham. Yeah. I think something like five different casseroles, mm -hmm. the Korean pies, egg butter. There was just yeah. like so much to choose from. It yeah, was just yeah. massive. And I think I ate so much that I got this acid, this mm -hmm. was it acid reflux, acid reflux from yeah. that, or oh, that that I had to take them pills again because yeah. I just kept gorging on it like there's yeah. no tomorrow because there was so much goodness. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the Christmas traditions is to to leave the the food on the table for so the undead. Well, whatever for the undead relatives. That's what I yeah. read. The internet yeah. doesn't lie. When it's on yeah, the internet, obviously. it's true. For the undead relatives. From whom you obviously go to steal the food from since you're going to eat it anyway. Yeah, so. fucking smooch your death and yeah. death and stay eating your food. Yeah. You're dead, you don't need any food. Yeah, you smooched off in life and yet yeah. oh, fuck's sake, Uncle Herbert. <laughs> By the way, how did you get into uh, into heaven, Uncle that used to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> no this took a weird turn just right now, I think. Mean. No, that's, that was actually a story and joke from Jim Jeffries. I just love that joke, so I can't take credit for that <laughs> one. Okay. No, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, you leave the food on the table, so it's not even, you know, done once you get... Um, after you've eaten once, because yeah. then you can come back and nibble on it some more, like, as soon as your stomach allows. Or when you wake up at night because you have uh -huh. to take a leak. Yeah, yeah. You get up and then you say, oh, ham. So you take a leak and like I take one or two slices of ham, some gravy and maybe some mashed potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in the end you actually end up with a yeah. full-size dinner plate on a normal day outside of the uh -huh. holidays. 
that's a full fetched meal. Yeah. And that's a midnight not middle of the night snack. Yep. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> well we make our own tiny version of it this year at our place. Mm. Because oh. we this year didn't went to her parents' place. Mm. Because now it's also a bit more bit more trouble because we have the bunnies since like what? Oh yeah. Two years, so yeah. we have to take the cage with us, so they actually have to pick us up. Right. Because we don't have a car, actually neither of us have a driver license. Yeah. So how far, where, where did we live? Um, Orimark, near Lachti. Yeah, okay, so it takes a couple so, of hours anyway to, to yeah, travel. Yeah, two plus hours, yeah. you know, a bit over two hours to drive there. Mm -hmm. But it's always a pain in the ass for the parents because they have to take a bigger car and then mm -hmm. yeah, drive yeah, yeah. over two hours here. And, yeah, then and then drive back right away drive back yeah. so it's a absolutely pain in the ass so mm -hmm. we well also we wanted this year to have it at our place so. yeah. well one big complaint of tia was like i want decorations i want a christmas tree and i like who gives a shit <laughs> especially like i don't know if it was still in the recording but i want my christmas bunny the, the what, no? easter or all ah, right I can tell it again because he has no recollection from the last episode. No, we had the Easter decorations because on Easter we put it on twigs and so like mm -hmm. bunnies and mm -hmm. stuff like ornaments. Yeah, for Christmas, but Easter themed. Yeah. And apparently one year I put it up on a Christmas tree. And after that, each year my parents try to hide it mm -hmm. because it's an Easter ornament. It's yeah. not supposed to be on a Christmas tree, right. but I every year just ripped everything apart till I found it. <laughs> And it became the Christmas bunny right. ornament. <laughs> so it was a tradition. <laughs> and what no. is, what's the point of opening up a Christmas tree if you don't have a Christmas bunny ornament? <laughs> I hope, I have to, yeah. by the way, I have to call my dad because I asked him to ask my mom to, if she still have that, yeah. if she took the old decoration because that's yeah. this one thing I want. I want my fucking Christmas, Christmas bunny, bunny ornament. Yeah. <laughs> then Tia gets her... Get to a nap Christmas tree, or if I get a replica of the exact same one, <laughs> then for sure. Yeah, that was her only complaint. But so, so everything is hanging in the balance. Yeah, that everything is smooth. Or finding the Christmas bunny. Yeah, everything okay. depends on that. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm not really big on doing that. I, I mean, it was well, exciting as a kid to put this. Um, Aluminium stripes, la yeah, yeah. I don't know what's called in other languages. And all the ornaments, it was kind of fun. Yeah, tinsel maybe? Yeah, I think it tinsel. Yeah, yeah okay. anyway. Yeah, it was fun. Christmas ornaments, we should call them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually ornaments because it's just this kind of. But I know what you mean, but anyway, you know, just. It was actually kind of fun to decorate the shit. tree. And, well, but now yeah. it's kind of like, well, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Well, Tia apparently does. <laughs> But we, we got a small ham because, well, mm. we are two people. So we yeah. got a three yeah. kilogram ham. Sounds a lot because there was nothing smaller. Yeah. Everything else was seven, eight kilograms yeah. plus. But they do have some bones in them. No, they're, yeah. they're free ones not. Oh, right. Yeah. They're bone free. The seven, eight ones have a bone. Yeah, yeah, the big ones I meant just now. Yeah. The big ones have a bone. Yeah. Mostly. But then again, that's not going to weigh more than a kilo anyway. Mm. Yeah, anyway, yeah. But the freer one was actually a good tight one. It was mm -hmm. pretty yummy. And yeah. made us some nice egg butter. How famous is that, by the way, outside of Finland and the I Nordic country? I have no idea, actually. Really simple. You just boil some eggs and smash them up into butter. And you add maybe a bit salt onto your taste, mm -hmm. and you have egg butter. Yeah. And you you can also add some cream in there if you want. Okay, you have my attention. I never heard <laughs> of that. Well, you can add some cream. Why did I mix. never hear of that? Well, now you have. I got to scream at Tia about that. But you can have that any time of the year, you know. I know. That's not limited to Christmas. I know, but yeah. so many options that I apparently missed. Yeah. But, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, and you just put it on Korean pies, yeah. we call it. Mm. I don't know what's the real name for it. Korean pastry, Karelian something, something. Well, that thing that looks like an old woman's pussy, anyway. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Put some egg butter on the. <laughs> Makes it look even better. <laughs> yeah. You and can they... eat the shit out of the egg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that took again a weird turn. Mm. 
And of course, to top off our light meal that we saw, <laughs> right? By the way, I think it wasn't that heavy so far. Because mm-hmm. butter is actually not that bad for you mm-hmm. and the end of the amount depends on it. Ham is not really that bad for you because all the fat goes out of it because it's for hours in the damn oven. Yeah. And then we had creamy garlic potatoes. There, where it came, comes really. And you know, shit ton of garlic, yeah. onions, cream, and potatoes. And oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. It was. I was actually so full that I couldn't move the first Christmas evening. And oh my god! <laughs> Half an hour later, I felt there was a bit space. <laughs> well, of course, my first instinct was like, let's take another slice of ham <laughs> yeah. and some potatoes yeah. and some egg butter. Mm. That should, you know, weigh down. Some yeah, and, and somewhat, and re- it turned release the uh, pressure and, and bloating. <laughs> Especially like I slept that night so terrible because I did that around four or five times. Yeah. So my my body was so full of this crap that I couldn't proper sleep. My body was too busy <laughs> trying to fight a massive, sickening amounts of food somehow to get along with that. It's like, what the fuck are you doing to me? Are you insane? Are you mad? Uh, um, of course, we had we had some glurgy while we were mm-hmm. having making the food. How is it called in English? I know in German, Glühwein. Yeah, I have no idea, actually. This Christmas wine-based hot beverage. Yeah. Well, if you know it, write to us. (laughs) Because we are way too lazy to look it up, apparently. Yes. In the end, it's not that super important that we have to make, like, listen to me type on my tablet. Yeah. Well, some kind of wine-based beverage. Yeah, what you drink hot. Yep. No, but, oh my god, uh, that was, by the way, why I brought the food thing up, like, um, yesterday I went, uh, it was the day after the holidays, mm-hmm. um, so I went to the uh, mall to go to the grocery store to fetch some groceries. Mm-hmm. Well, I walked, had to walk past McDonald's and literally there was a line okay. till outside of McDonald's wow. to the escalators. <sighs> okay. So apparently all that junk food over the last three days weren't enough. Let's have some <laughs> McDonald's on top of it on the day after the holidays. Mm. Like seriously, a line. You know what? I after days as much I enjoyed that good meaty and uh, food. Mm. I was kind of like, you know what? My, I need some vegetables. I need yeah. I need to eat something healthy. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. I start to feel like shit slowly. <laughs> And there they said, like, more McDonald's. Like, oh, my God, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Mm-hmm. <sighs> By the way, also, what's, what's you fucked up? Apparently, the cinema is closed on Christmas. You mean on, on Christmas Eve? Eve? Yeah. Well, that's not very surprising to me. Well, that sounds for me surprising, because I think that Christmas for people that don't have their families around, or generally lonely people, the mm-hmm. cinema is the only place of good entertainment what you can do then hmm. I picture the cinema being a place for that in a good way well it could be but then again it would need some staff there who would be missing out on the Christmas Eve so a bunch of other stores like the fucking 24-7 stores almost in here you know? well, yeah. like the Sivas and shit mm-hmm. like that they every day open well yeah they're open but again <laughs> I mean I wouldn't want to work there. Yeah, but but still, in the end, you get like a good pay also for that day. Mm. So actually, well, yeah. it's really worth it. No, but like, what if you don't have family around? You know, you mm. might want to fetch maybe a nice movie. Oh, yeah, but in this day and age of Netflix and Pirate Bay and whatnot. yeah, but maybe that poor sap wants to get out of his apartment. Oh, yeah, feel a little bit less suicidal. <laughs> Maybe some stranger brushes up against you and it's human contact. We all been there. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay, you've made yourself sad now. No, yeah. <laughs> no, but then I think it would be kind of nice to have this option. Mm. Actually, we considered watching a movie on Christmas on the same day. We kind of mm. decided, hey, how about we're going to maybe fetch a movie over the yeah. day, come home, have some gluggy, make food, you know, make that... A little yeah. something. But then we looked nothing. Yeah. It was highly disappointing. <laughs> because I wanted to fetch the new Hobbit movie. Right. 
in in 3D because that one comes runs in HFR. Yeah. High frame rate. The mm -hmm. only way that 3D works without that it blurs, yeah. gives you headaches. The only fucking time it worked. We actually watched the film on on Christmas Eve waiting for for more food to to appear on the table. What did you watch? World War Z. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. It was terrible. I'm, By the way, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> it didn't even lead to anything. Yeah. It was just oh my god. It was terrible. Well, Brad Pitt as James Bond in a zombie apocalypse. That was basically it. I was highly disappointed. Yeah. And it really did not, did not have anything to do with the actual book, which it was based what I, what, on... What I still have to steal at some point. Yeah. No, but seriously, I mean, it only had the name in common. Like it happens quite often in this kind of oh, thing. Yeah. Actually, I just today read a nice quote. Don't judge a book by its movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite true. Oh, by the way, you know what movie I watched on Christmas Eve? Well, do tell. I give you two guesses. It was a Christmas themed movie. Well, that there movie. are quite a few of those, I suppose. So... Come on, give me your suggestion. Just on top of your head. Ah... Uh, what was the one with Schwarzenegger? Turbo Man? <laughs> wasn't that a Christmas film? Wrong. But it was a Christmas movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for one more guess. For fuck's sake, I don't really it go... It doesn't get more Christmassy than that. It's not Die Hard. <laughs> but it still counts for me as a Christmas movie. Well, that's one of the best Christmas movies ever. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know of any Christmas movies. God damn it. Time up. <laughs> Fine. It was Home Alone. <laughs> Fuck, I was just about to say that, actually. I, when I said, like, it doesn't yeah. get more Christmassy. Yeah. By the way, what a shitty mom. <laughs> and what a shitty un uncle. At some point he turns to... Kevin, yeah, to yeah. McCarty Cork and says like, look what you've done, you little jerk. <laughs> but really aggressive, like, oh, seriously, that's rather rude, that yeah. sentence for a kid. And it wasn't even his fault. Yeah. But seriously... That was one dysfunctional family. Seriously, I haven't seen that movie since I was a kid. Hmm. I felt like, well, it's Christmas, let's watch it. Actually, Tia agreed to it, I wanted to watch it last year, and she was like, nah. Yeah. This year she was like, how about that? I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Checked it, you know, yeah. and got it. And oh my God, it was actually amusing, but a bit long. You look really forward to when the whole trap and accident thing happened. Mm, yeah. And seriously, they should have went to the emergency room <laughs> after really few scenes. Well, yeah. By the way, we watched part two the day after. Mm. That movie was unrealistic. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> no, but they went really more cartoonish about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, he literally throws bricks. Uh huh. Like at that one dude's face from the yeah. roof, like yeah. five or six of them. Yep. It's like, oh my god, there they went a bit too far. But still, part one was still kind of entertaining for what mm. it is. I guess it's mostly nostalgia yeah, at that point. Yeah. Well, fuck, I revisited it and I didn't regret it. And it's funny to see McCarty Corkin as a mm. little boy. <laughs> you should rewatch it, re -watch it next yeah. year around Christmas. Maybe I will. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But now that we've uh, covered basically Christmas, I think we are heading into New Year. But actually, by the time that one is out, I mean, like, <coughs> it's New Year! Yay! Yay! Damn it, I don't have a sound clip for that. <laughs> what do I? We, we no. have to make our own. Yeah. Whee! <laughs> oh, so. we, we make it with a bit of. Okay, no peanut butter jelly time. I like Why? peanut butter jelly time. No, but um, 
I think what are here the traditions by the way? Is there anything that's really quite typical? Besides of getting drunk and eat too much, what by the way describes every holiday in here. <laughs> Mostly yeah. There's not extra deviation. It doesn't matter which one. Midsummer Christmas, Independence Day, New Year, you say what, and it's mm. just eating and drinking. You make loads and loads of very specific foods, which you then gorge yourself on, yes. and, and, some Pour, and and wash it down with, with yeah. lots and lots of booze. That's basically the way it goes. Um, but yeah, not that much really, you know, you cook some wieners and and potato salad but that's that's and, by the way then, really, really yeah. surprising yeah. because that's how they say Germans have it too. Yeah. potato salad and Frankfurter mm -hmm. wieners yeah and do they you have uh, to be specific it's Frankfurter yeah and, and do you do you um, cook them in a pot of water yeah that's yeah. how you do it yeah but actually, that's not my family. What the, that yeah. kind of thing? Because yeah, but that's the that's the exact way of, of preparing them instead yeah. of frying them on a pan. Or no, no, no. I mean, like uh, we. Uh, our yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean about that. Don't do the tradition, but uh, yeah, if you and that's do not that, really something that I do. You don't any fry other wieners. You don't do it. That's just wrong. They have to be just not even boiled in hot water. That's all. Yeah, but that's not really something I do on a regular basis. It's only on New Year's. Really? Yeah. I do it like And I guess that's mostly well, well, from my experience, that's the the way that people prepare them only on New Year's Eve on, in Finland. But you have to get that that uh, potato salad that's made with cream fresh. Yeah, that's the best. And then you have to buy a pack of like bacon bits, fry them, and just mix them in there. Mm -hmm. As well, boil one egg or two eggs, smash them up, and mix them in there too. And you have. From the ready side, that you have a really survivable one hmm. with really little effort compared to making a potato salad from scratch. Yeah, <laughs> we do it like twice well, a year or so. That all right? Yeah. Well, here are some <laughs> cooking tips <laughs> from Werner Yes, please. You. <laughs> the cooking show. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's really a low effort thing. We do it like mm. I said, like twice yeah. a year or so, yeah. but really not for for New Year's. Yeah, and then and then midnight starts to come around. You've Fire off some rockets and and really pathetically in here. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> really basic, yeah, not that much, but but at least you can drink really much and then fall on your face in the gutter in the snow and freeze to death. And after you've blown your finger off with some self-made funky explosive bits, I get to that in a moment. Also mm. on my side, <laughs> illegal firework stuff. Mm -hmm. No, but that's basically what you have on traditions in here. Right? Yeah. Oh, I just noticed a new feature how it stretches different. Hey, and stretch and, and in Germany as well, uh, I gather. Well, in Germany, like we do one thing religiously, apparently. A little skit. I think skit is the right term for it. Mm, yeah. Sketch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Skit. Called dinner. Com comedy bit. Comedy bit. Mm. Dinner for one. Hmm. In Germany, different title, but the title is Dinner for One, I think, got initially released in 63, so yeah. 50 years ago. Hmm. And it's basically a 18-minute comedy bit that yeah. runs around, I would estimate it, 12 to 15 times over the whole evening <laughs> of New Year Eve yeah. on several channels. You right. can't escape it. <laughs> you can't miss it. Like, yeah. Oh my God, I missed it. Mm. Actually, my dad watched it at least three or four times each right. New Year's. It was a torture. I hated it. I wanted to watch good stuff. Well, that's for, usually the way it goes. You know, if your parents like something, you're yeah. you're going to be against it. Definitely, especially how I grew up, little yeah. rebellious, little punk dude. Mm. No, but I was that way young. But fast forward three years, mm. you know, I'm out of the house, and so I yeah. catch myself looking actively on which channel is it running <laughs> to fetch it actually several times myself yeah just amazing and actually i started to love it and it took me say i was like in the middle of my 20s mm. to realize 
the dirty joke in the end. <laughs> because this whole bit was so innocent to me for all over the years. Because, you know, just like... Mm. You're grown custom to it and you kind of yeah. laugh at it, but it kind of, you don't pay that close attention to certain details anymore. Yeah. It's just a tradition. It's almost like a children's movie that you've seen when you were little and then you watch it again later on when you're an adult and you figure out all that of they those... they apparently talk about fetching. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to explain what fetching is. Yeah, you can, you can do your own research now, yeah. dear listeners. Uh, I, I recommend make just a straight out picture search. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Um, but since then, I, I have it actually on DVD, I think. Uh, yeah. By the way, we just watched it. Yeah, Did it was, you enjoy yeah, it? Well, it was fun. And, and apparently, I, when you mentioned the title, I didn't really it didn't ring any bells at all. But when we watched it, I remember seeing it before. So it obviously has played uh, on Finnish TV at some point as well. The, uh, but I guess not to the extent as it does. No, it's Germany. not like a traditional thing that plays every every time. Like on Independence Day, we have the Unknown Soldier and mm. yeah, like some. And every Christmas Eve, there's the the Snowman and whatnot. Yeah. So it's not like tradition, like like that. But you know, they that actually, I tried to find out what was the origin, why is it such, such a huge tradition mm. in Germany. I couldn't figure that shit out. Especially since it's not in German. Yeah, it's in English. <laughs> in English. By the way, we, we put the YouTube link up on our blog and introduction is in German, but it's just for the Germans that don't speak good English. So it's just maybe two minutes of him talking, the whole bit is in English. So stay with it in that moment. <laughs> But also really sick was like that um, they one year tried to air it in color. Yeah, because it's, it's in black and white. Yeah. yeah, because it's from 63. Yeah, yeah. And there was tons and tons of fucking complaint made. Yeah. Mail. Outrage. On paper, in the square yeah. things. <laughs> because it was before the internet. Yeah. And that was the last time they ever tried to put so it out. So people in totally lost it when, when the yeah, TV channel tried, to, tried yeah. to color it in. Yeah. <laughs> now, but what I said before, like I, I tried to figure out what was the origin of mm, the tradition. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I could find, the earliest things of recording of that, that it apparently became a thing, was in 73. Yeah. So 10 years after, after they did it the yeah. first time. But no reason why, no, no further people. explanation. Apparently, bam. It's here and it stayed to to this day. That's weird. It, well, that's I guess that's mostly the way that traditions form. In yeah. any case, you know, you don't really find out why things are done. It's just it there just at some point for some reason, and then after a few years, it's well, this is the way we've always done it anyway. So, so we're doing it again. <laughs> yeah, like no, wait, I'm not gonna go there this time. <laughs> you I, had that look in your face, that kind of. You know yeah, what I mean. Uh. It, it, it betrayed what you had in your mind. <laughs> yeah, it's just like one of the few times that I have to be thankful that my brain actually <laughs> intercepted the straight thing that would have come out of my mouth. Usually it doesn't work. That yeah. gets me always in trouble. So, <laughs> ah. mm. No, but that's definitely our tradition. So and I, I won't miss it for the world. And if I would ever, if I would, would ever have kids... I would torture my kid with that. You know what? I actually enjoy to watch it two or three times that evening. Mm. But just because I would have kids then I would watch it five times. <laughs> just to, just really, to torture them. Yeah. I had to go through it. <laughs> so, so yeah. You, I just multiply it and yeah, make it worse. passing it around. Yeah, just the same suffering for everybody. Yeah, it's a tradition, you know. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. <laughs> uh, also, other thing, mm. um, because uh, Germany bought us straight to Poland yeah and well Poland is really famous for getting illegal, illegal fireworks mm -hmm. great story when I was like how it was I 14 15 I don't know yeah. relatively young well teenager anyway yeah mm -hmm. so well we started out drinking uh, I mean soda and <laughs> who am I kidding <laughs> By the way, you can drink beer and wine officially when you're 16 in Germany and can buy it. So, mm. you know, so who cares? Mm -hmm. 
No, but uh, we went out to, you know, shoot some rockets and shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those little firecrackers that you have that are maybe, I you know, a few yeah, centimeters five, long. Five centimeters, yeah. Yeah, just really thin ones. They make mm -hmm. just big buff. So, where, you know, where you usually put your foot over it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it feels funny. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently somebody threw one of the Polish one of the small ones. <laughs> right. And well, I was like, hello, put my foot on it. And like somebody like, no, that's the Polish one. <laughs> and in this moment, this thing erupted and I limped for the next two hours. And I, it took me two and a half hours to get halfway the feeling back into my whole right foot. Ouch. This really tiny mini cracker. Yeah just had so much power and shit in there because mm -hmm. it wasn't formed and built like regulation yeah, in yeah. Germany. It was just like, ah, oh, let's put everything in there what you want uh -huh. to. And that year we also had the thing that had a good diameter of that. What was this? What is that? It was about 30 centimeters. Yeah. Round diameter. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. That thing had a suggestive distance of like two, be 20 meters away or yeah. 25 meters at mm -hmm. least okay. minimum yeah. we put that thing down fired it up and we ran like hell because that mm -hmm. thing looked actually intimidating yeah we hauled ass mm -hmm. <laughs> actually jumped down because well we are in the spirit of it yeah and then we looked and looked and it was a blind one. Oh. it didn't went off so but it was a dud yeah yeah but you know what? No, no one of us dared to <laughs> go good. there to check. Yeah. Usually, you know, with normal crackers, you're like, ah, come on, I can at least check. You know, mm -hmm. you kick it twice with your yeah, foot yeah. and see if something comes out of there. But that one, we're like, nope, I think we are done with that one. <laughs> so did it ever fire? No, sadly not. Okay. That was still so stuck in my head. That's why I wanted to mention mm -hmm. it because that whole thing looked so fucking intimidating. I was so hoping to see that thing go off. Yeah. Especially also when you read this intimidating line of be at least 25 meters away mm -hmm. from its security mm -hmm. distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you can't even fire it off in the urban place. So we had to go mm. somewhere yeah. specific for it. So you really hope to see like this really big. And we just got it out from Poland illegally and shit, you know. <laughs> and when, like I said previously, the tiny five centimeter mm. one make my foot numb for hours. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to see what that 30 centimeter bad boy does. Yeah. Foot of dynamite oh. goodness. <laughs> Apparently that evening some dude throwed also dynamite around. Nice. That was a fun evening. And then yeah. I broke the bro code. Oh. Unintentionally. Tell me more. Well, my friend started to hit on that one chick the whole time. Uh -huh. And I was kind of like, well, okay, I back off. I know it's him. And well, but she kind of kept coming up to me and we had apparently normal conversations, but I kept the conversation on the plain normal field. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, talk bullshit like you do as pretentious teenager, talk mm -hmm. politics and your view of the world, like mm -hmm. as you know shit, you know, yeah. you're, you're being just a little pretentious prick basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. but he always tried to chime in and it never worked out apparently. Oh. So it was like after this whole evening, everybody already was sleeping. We were all sleeping in that house, like mm -hmm. 20 people. We were just uh, talking till like three o'clock in the morning. And it was cold, so we were under cover that she got us. And I still was thinking like, why are we just talking? And then she just leaned over and kissed me. And of course, in this moment, guess who got up to take a fucking piss? <laughs> My friend. So that... Didn't go down Actually, well. actually my best friend at that yeah. time. Yeah, and? Oh, he was mad with me for fucking weeks. Didn't <laughs> talk to me, almost punched me in the face oh. and shit. <laughs> oh, well, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do shit. Yeah, you tried to talk politics and other boring subjects. Yeah. To, to drive her away. You did your best. It's not my fault that I was amazingly attractive and <laughs> apparently irresistible. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I had quite a record in that time, and that's fine. <laughs> well, we can't fault you on that one. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and it wasn't my fault that I went out for a few weeks with her. <laughs> yeah, that too. No, but Probably that was true. after I talked with him, because oh, yeah. day after I went over to his place, and then we straightened hmm. things out. So you punched your... 
what the fuck? You punched each other on the nose a couple of times and then it was settled. Yeah, something like that. Actually, it was a bit shoving around because actually I was so good friends with him, like my best friend. So I ring the doorbell and mom lets me, of course, straight mm-hmm. in. You know, like how it goes. Yeah. Like, and go into his room and he was like, of course, like just shoving me against the wall. And I shoved him against the other wall. Like, Dude, <sighs> shut the fuck up and listen to me, you know? <laughs> Like, you know, you shove each other around for five minutes and then you sit down and you're good, you know, bygones are bygones. Oh, children. Yeah, but technically I broke the bro code. That was my own fault. I tried Mm. politics and what is usually a (laughs) bigger turn off than politics? Oh, Oh, well. (sighs) Sometimes your best is just not good enough. Yeah. But New Year's was always funny. Like we shot rockets and one got stuck into a gate of a house and then the gate <laughs> bursted into flames <laughs> and stuff like oh. oh and then we had the bottle rockets and there was we were celebrating it one year next to a church in that house, you know. Yeah. And we tried to aim with the bottle ro- uh, rockets again the you know the what's it called? The wind bird on top. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Mm. What shows you the direction from where the wind comes? The fuck is it? Uh, Whatever. Not... Yes. Yeah, so we aimed on that on top of yeah. the church. Luckily, it didn't hit any windows with our <laughs> rockets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I was. I, I think I was a pretty fucked up teenager. Yeah. yeah. I have no interesting stories like that to tell. I mean, we did have some close calls with our friends as well. Obviously, we shot rockets into directions that were something other than up and could have done some major damage but luckily didn't uh, also of course roman candles made very nice shooting weapons that yeah. lights up and then it pops out funky glowy <laughs> balls which you can aim at other people <laughs> yeah that was my ba- uh, my band name in high yeah. school funky glowing balls no, it wasn't. I didn't never have a band. <laughs> wow. But anyway, obviously, I know. It was my porn actor name. No. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine that. Um, yeah, no no safety goggles, obviously, because those are for pussies. That's why you smoked also, because it yeah. was come in really handy on, on New yeah. Year's. Yeah. But Finland really, you know, hopped on the, uh, on the regulations boat concerning fireworks when I was a teenager because I can still remember we had these really you know large ones they were, they were like 10 15 centimeters long and pro- mm. probably three centimeters in diameter and it was like shaped like a diamond dynamite yeah. stick I know and it really made a loud big big bang well that's the idea yeah and obviously they forbade them because someone not from that firework mind you but from some Ex- yeah, from extracting the gunpowder from it and making it using it that to make their own explosives mm. manage to maim their hand or whatever so ex- or that idiots that get their mm. finger blown off because they don't get the concept of lighting the firecracker mm. and then throwing it away mm. just keep holding it yeah. wait so we d- we actually did that too come on, we yeah. all did that Lighting it and wait to the last second. Yeah, yeah, yeah that... obviously. And by the way, as mo- by the way, have you noticed one thing? On New Year's, you get more and more drunk, and as more you fire crackers, you need to up the ante. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and that's in combination combination with being more inebriated. Yeah. Not the safest thing. <laughs> Explosives and drunkenness. That's a very good combo. By the way, it was always funny in Frankfurt. Because you could go in the center of the river hmm. and literally like it started already 10, 15 minutes before midnight because apparently some people don't have working watches. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. yeah. But actually the fireworks was going in a major way hmm. for an hour. So you could really take like wow. one o'clock in the morning, yeah. Yeah. just stand on the on the bridge on the riverside and just watch that shit i was yeah. with i showed it one time tia it was so amazing and when i seen and here the official firework was like what five ten minutes something like that i guess and by that time everybody else was done with the fireworks and mm. it's what that's that's it i want to see more shit mm. 
But have you noticed usually the people with the smallest income have the biggest bags of firecrackers? Yeah, it somehow works that At way. At least it seemed to me always mm. like that. Yeah. Well, I guess it's just that, you know, poor people are usually a bit dumb and, and they find solace in banging objects. Well, I love it too. <laughs> but I don't. But you're dumb anyway, so. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> and, uh, no, but I'm and, just and what's to... your income like at the moment, by the <laughs> way? <laughs> what's yours? <laughs> so, so what my point exactly, you know. <laughs> no, but I'm just not willing to spend enormous amounts on this kind well, of thing. Does, or any amounts, actually, in the it, moment. It does feel rather stupid anyway, because you just blow it up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I think it's more fun when you're young, though. Yeah. But I never... I must... Well, I... I can't say I've never made my own fireworks, because that would be a, a, a lie. But it was never really anything, you know, super special. But I did have some kids in my school who'd blown up their hands with fireworks. So it was quite a common thing to do it then here. Yeah. Right? Maybe also because the regulations came down so hard that you kind of had mm. to improvise. Yeah. But we did always backfires. Yeah. Because you, you limit the certain amount of firecrackers, mm -hmm. the bigger ones, so people take the smaller ones to bait themselves, yeah. bigger ones. So it's always a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know that's, what the Germans do? We're lazy. We just drive over to Poland <laughs> yeah. and bring the fireworks ready back to bed yeah, as well. Yeah. No, but that's usually the way that any kind of prohibition works. You limit the people's choice and they will Come use up. methods to circumvent your limitations. Yes. Yeah. And you usually end up with worse results than, than you actually had. So. By the way, you didn't even have the option to go to a neighbor country in that sense. Well, no. Although because I Russia don't... is mm. not Europe, so you would have had a harder time to yeah, get over point, there. Yeah, uh, especially somewhere in the 90s, which was... But Poland was always kind mm. of... Because it was the Europe, Central yeah. Europe, so it was relatively easy to go yeah. over and back. Yeah. It actually literally was just showing your ID and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But yeah, that was uh, that was New Year's of my youth. Nothing very special. Yeah, because it didn't actually really tell you that much about. It. I well, just, I this, just. This was the New Year's of your youth, I suppose. <laughs> Would be the wrap up most, more, more more likely. I already cut my story short because they're all involving a lot of people getting injured, mm -hmm. getting drunk, and shooting yeah. at objects, and what well, good old times, basically. <laughs> No, but now this year uh, it's gonna be more relaxed. Just hanging out with our good sound guy, Yusi Hutula, for mm -hmm. what you find at Prime Score. That does our mixing and so. Yeah. So have a good time with him because his kids are out of the way for that <laughs> day. <laughs> ah, come on! How good can you party when your kids are around? You know. Yeah. It doesn't really work that no, well. Ah. <sighs> But now um, that we bubbled on about traditions and stuff. Yeah, what have you there now? Apparently a lot of cat hairs on my tablet. Well, well that's kind of, you know, to be expected in this yeah. household. Yeah, a lot of pussy hair. Mm. And talking of pussy. Yeah, can't run out. So I basically what comes now are the top stories, or just the stories I could find in the last <laughs> moment about 2013. Mm. It, okay, I entitled that one really nicely, Pussy Knitting. Mm -hmm. so, from, uh, from, from one pussy to another. Yeah. So a self-proclaimed cra uh, craftivist, Casey Jenkins, 34, is doing a 28 performance art piece in which she knits a very long scarf from a ball of wool that she has inserted into her vulva. It's appropriately titled Casting of My Womb. And here comes more of the text. I have to just read because you couldn't just make a comment better up than mm -hmm. that. Jenkins is um, it's largely doing this the project to feel more at one with her body and to try to make vaginas more approachable by pairing them with the warm, fuzzy tasks like knitting. To whom is... How is it more approachable? Like, hey, <laughs> there's a ball of, of wool I in there. I have some thread hanging from <laughs> one. 
Jeez. Well, that usually takes guys off because it's kind of like, well, I guess it's that time of the month. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this... I can't really... There are no words. But but in her downtime, does she, where does she keep the knitting? <laughs> yeah, I, I did actually... Does she take it out? I, yeah. yeah. By the way, that's called art. Then. Mm, yeah. It's performance art. This is it, people. Art in its purest form. Well... No, but seriously, how unapproachable are vaginas in general? They are the most approachable, approachable thing. Yeah. <laughs> that and cock, depending on your sexual preference. Yeah. It's not like you have to, I, you know, especially lure people towards it. Yeah, like that it has the best misses. Like, you know, usually people, when they see it, they don't go like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Well, if they go like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> then there's a reason why they say that. Because oh, yeah. then they go for the cock. But Maybe this... she has some bad experiences with gay people. Well, maybe, but a ball of wool? Yeah, I can only imagine what it looks like when it comes out. What it smells like. Mm -hmm. That's one scarf I would not probably wear. <laughs> No, not, not, not rise away, at least. So, if your better half would do it, you wouldn't wear it. <laughs> well, that's a difference. There's an image, story. by the way, now for you that you yeah. never can delete. This is something I can think of, yes. <laughs> Keep your hands above the table, please. <laughs> <laughs> hands on the table. <laughs> no, but it's kind you know, of... I must say, a, a, a roll of, of woolen thread down there does not really do it for me. <laughs> Just so we're clear on the subject. Okay, we hear his excuses. <laughs> no, but it's so silly what people really try to sell us art over. Mm. I mean, it's, I don't get the message. Maybe I'm not artsy or smart enough, but mm. I don't get the point of it. No, it's, it's... It comes from my womb. Then you have yeah, to ins insert it, it yeah. way deeper. It kind of sounds a bit like art for art's sake. Like, look what I can do. Yeah, and, and then it's fantastic because it's something that no one's done before. And but, yeah, like you said, art for art. So. Yeah. By the way, 28 days she did that. <laughs> well, we are not impressed. Yeah. Next. Casey Jenkins, screw you. <laughs> but apparently you already have to space fit with a ball of yarn. <laughs> All right, next item. Uh, <laughs> well... Maybe we keep it first sexy and go to the other things, the more fucked up ones. Let's keep it sexy. <laughs> but I don't know if that fits into not being fucked up too. So, the violent naked pooping masturbator. <laughs> what? So, uh, um, so it was in America. I forgot now which. It was in Florida, but I don't know which city. So, uh, Gregory Matthew Brony. Already that name is screams pure evil you hear it Gregory Matthew Brony somehow he has three names like most prominent killers in our history I have three names <laughs> well most people do but they usually don't use them all well my one is relatively secretly I don't tell them many people Tammy it's not gonna happen here Tammy no Whis no. whisper it to my ear it's Christian. <laughs> no, you liar! <laughs> I gotta cut that out. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. Yeah, How know. did you not know? We are almost out of damn beer, by the way. So this is our show for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! That that that's that's fucking great. What happened? Okay. okay, I got it off. <laughs> no, but uh, now, <clears throat> yeah. okay, Gregory Matthew Bruni. Stepped into the Huffington Post Weird News Hall of Fame because that's where I got that thing. Mm -hmm. That's where I get all my fucked up news stories. <laughs> that's the best source for it lately. Yeah, okay, so when he terrorized a nice Florida couple, first by climbing naked on the roof of their home and then by pooping and masturbating and destroying property inside. So first... Basically, he went inside and started to tear shit apart. And when the house owner came down, he basically squatted down and started to defecate on the 
carpet while masturbating. Well, that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Well, and then he did some questionable things with the vacuum cleaner that you might want to left to be unspoken. Well, I probably have a picture in my mind anyway. <laughs> Burned there for all eternity. <laughs> well, like, I bet he wasn't on drugs at all. Certainly not. Oh. But I mean, I just love the high, uh, the headline, Violent Naked Pooping Masturbator. Just, in, <laughs> just imagining it. You just hear some mm. noise and you go down it's like, you have to be kidding. Uh, Seriously? <laughs> pooping? And um, what is wrong with you two? Mm, and I'm not even on the internet at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. So what is this shit? Ma, could you please take it into the kitchen? There's linoleum. We can wash it up. That's... That carpet was expensive. Oh, not the jizz all over the fucking oh, drapes. Oh, come on. We just had them cleaned. Well, that's... Um, that's another image, just the jizz spraying around. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, at least it's an original home invasion. Well, yeah, at least yeah. that. Not like something... Hand over your cash. Yeah, because Basics. also I'm a, I'm a proper journalist. I didn't read any further because... <laughs> I was a bit too late on time to pull new stories on. Right. But come on, tell me that this isn't a funny news story. Well, yes, it, it is. <laughs> ha ha. How would you react? Ha ha. Ha ha. Do you hear me laughing? Ha ha. I don't be condescending. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, how would you react seriously if that would happen? I might have a violent nervous breakdown. Then you would say, like, Rafael, not again. <laughs> Why every year the yes. same thing? Yes, I'm in secret origin, the Gregory Matthew bro. Uh, here we are. And oh, I know I'm actually knitting <laughs> from my butt. Heinous. Yes. Ah. Oh, by the way, I forgot one tradition, what I wanted to I make. made this lovely hat for you. <laughs> oh, it smells funny though. Yeah, it's a funky ski mask. But, well, it's kind of really kind of fallish colors or kind of brownish, darkish tones. <laughs> and not so much of a fall type, so no mm, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Uh, no, but I forgot one tradition that I wanted to mention from a different country. From Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Apparently, wearing colorful underwear brings luck, so. What color is your underwear? What? Is that a, a, yeah. a question you're, yeah. you're directing that is a question. here? Wow. It's grey. So basically for good luck you want to wear yellow. If you want to find love, it's red. I'm, I'm wearing my red underwear right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look for the next mirror. <laughs> I'm going to make love to myself. Well, I just wear white underwear, and when I need some luck, I'll just... Whitey tidies? Yeah, I'll just have a drink and <laughs> two, and then I'll be very lucky in a few moments. Yeah, I guess so. Uh... I, I make my own luck. <laughs> oh, when life gives you beer, make lemonade. Make yellow <laughs> underwear. <laughs> yeah, yeah hey, come on, everybody knows like you have to forge your own luck. Yes. I made my own way in the world. I know that all goes into really weird directions, doesn't it? How unexpected from us. Yeah, uh, you never would have guessed. Oh, by the way, you know who implemented uh, uh, January 1st as New Year, as first person? I have no idea, actually. Mr. Yawn a lot. <laughs> It was Julius Caesar. Okay. Actually, he started that tradition. Okay, yeah. Well, but I think he was kind of known for like trying to entertain the, get keep the people at bay with some entertainment that they mm. don't step too much out of line. Yeah. Bread and games. I don't know how it's translated. Bolzenspiegel. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, but I almost bread, forgot. Bread and circuses. Yeah. But yeah, I almost forgot about my favorite news story of the whole year. 
it's football related or if you're American soccer <laughs> because actually you know football ball foot not egg and hand you know there's mm-hmm. a difference yeah so not hand egg yeah not hand egg <laughs> no but um, in Brazil 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 yeah in Brazil Brazil Brazil, Brazil. thank you so uh Basically, there was an altercation at the soccer game in the league, yeah? So, mm-hmm. basically, the referee kind of said, like, hey, you can't do that, uh, you know, foul. So, the player reacted with storming towards him really aggressively, so the referee pulled the knife. What? <laughs> Why would that referee have a knife with him? It's Brazil. Well, okay. <laughs> don't they have, like, a really insanely high crime, crime rate, don't they? Possibly. With car jacking as well. I read about it, yeah. they have kind of insanely high now. Possibly, yeah. Oh, little funny side story. <laughs> My friend Stefan, um, that was at that time in, in the Navy forces mm-hmm. of the States, so they had to stop uh, at Brazil, so they went out and wanted to, his friend wanted to go to an ATM. Mm-hmm. What if somebody jumped up with a fucking box cutter knife, like, give uh-huh. me your money? Yeah. Well, but there was like standing like three Navy guys, right? Mm-hmm. Trained army guys, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of took them out in like two seconds. Mm-hmm. Not even like, oh, they were like, how cute. <laughs> nice. No, but actually like yeah. really high crime rate. Yeah. So but, the referee had a knife and then... Well, he kind of slightly stabbed the player when I got it right. I don't have it now in that text. Yeah. But... uh the whole audience kind of went nuts. And what's the next logical step after that? Well, punch the guy sitting next to you, obviously. No, you storm onto the field, decapitate the referee. With what? Okay, I don't want to think. Some sharp it. tool. I don't, like wanna even, I don't even want to think about it. Okay, yeah. Head removal and... Well, you think that was enough? Probably not. Of course they put it on a fucking stake. Right. They went middle age on his ass. Medieval, yeah. I mean, seriously, like... That would be the definition of the term, I think. Yeah. I mean, they freaking decapitated that fucker, and... Like, that wasn't enough. They put it on the mm. fucking stake. I mean, if that shit would start to go down and I'm a tourist, I would be kind of like... <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah. I don't want to have to do anything with that shit. I'm done with that uh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. And, wait, there was... There was something else. Oh, yeah, right. And then the uh, the country released a statement of, like, this uh, doesn't uh, uh, reflect at all at the, uh, at the no, Brazil Soccer League and security mm-hmm. measures we can take <laughs> for the upcoming... World Cup. <laughs> what, by the way, happens like in what, six months from yeah. now? In six months, the World Cup of football mm-hmm. is in Brazil. Nice. First thing they did when I was kind of explaining why that happened, like, oh, uh, uh, that doesn't reflect what's going to happen in, in, yeah. at the World Cup. By the way, who would want to ever be the referee in the league there ever again? Oh, well, yeah. First thought, apparently they are carrying knives with them as a referee. Apparently, yes. So I guess it's a standard referee kit. Mm-hmm. Here's yeah. your whistle, here's yeah. your yellow and red card, here's yeah. your shirt, and sure. ah, here's your knife. Yeah. Don't forget your knife. Come on. Oh, almost forgot my <laughs> damn knife. That's a knife. That's not a knife. Oh. That's a knife. Noise. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. <Yeah. laughs> no, but how fucked up is that? Hmm. I can't uh, even imagine that, uh, being in there and seeing uh, that. Sounds like something out of a film. No, not really, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why something this... Something that can really happen. That's why I had to kind of mm. grab that one to, to the stories, because it was mm. just so fucked up that it doesn't sound true. Like, mm-hmm. that doesn't sound something that could happen in the year 2013. About something yeah, like that. Unfortunately, there are quite a few things that still do happen, even if it is 2013. Or, well, now it's 2014, and still yeah. weird shit is going to go down. Like what? You will hear later in the news. <laughs> so you're not quick on your feet. Yeah. 
No, but oh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> We're cavemen with computers. This kind of stuff is bound to happen. Yeah, basically. Sad as it is, this is the way of the world. Actually, as more the technology progresses, as more we move back towards the caveman mm. behavior. Kind so, of so, so here we are. Happy New Year, everyone, mm. on this uplifting Think. note. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do we say have anything or uh, you want yeah, to be... I think this would be the perfect place to end this whole thing. So Yeah, but we can say tease them with like next time we're gonna have a segment, hopefully it's gonna be called This Day in History. We wanted yeah. to do it today but This Day in History s- was a crappy, crappy day. It was a slow day in history. Not not much happened. I mean well, I can just quickly review a few things that took place on the 6th of, of January, if I can find my fucking note. <laughs> uh, it's Me not know how to operate book. How I book. You press on options. There it is. You press on options, decide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in any way, um, 6th of January 1955. Rowan Atkinson was born, now aged 59. Ah, so, I happy birthday. Happy birthday, Rowan. I fucking loved him. Yeah. I loved him as, I have to say, only thing how I know knew him for many, many years was mm. Mr. Bean. Yeah, well, likewise. By the way, best format for comedy because it, it doesn't involve language whatsoever. Yeah. So, you can just ship it all over the <laughs> world how you want. Yeah. We had teachers that actually brought... You know, when you reach the end of the year where you don't have any more to do with material, where you just yeah. do nothing, we had a teacher that kind of brought in, like, Mr. Bean VHS mm. tapes, yeah. free DVD. VHS for you, not familiar with the yeah. German alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you complain. You use the fucking same in here, too, so, <laughs> the Finns. Well, yeah. No, I'm just referring to your pronunciation yeah. of the letters. Fine, Mr. Fancy Pants. This is an English-speaking show, so... So we're going to be now all the dot in the way we pronounce things. But yes. I love the teddy bear. Mm, yeah. What was the name of the teddy bear? I have no idea, probably. Never knew it. Yeah, didn't even have a name since the show had no language to, to speak of. Yeah. And obviously well, well known for... for Mr. Queen and Mr. Zipper. Whereas Black Adder Edward... Edmund Black... Ed, 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 Edmund? Edward? Edna? Well, yeah, anyway. I could Something save you, but that. why would I? Yeah. Black Adder. Anyway. Um, and moving on, uh, on the 6th of January 1977, EMI fires the Sex Pistols. For what? They always were so <laughs> well behaved. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the reason. Because of their notir- not- notoriety garnered from the public behavior, which was not what did they ever do? What did they ever do? Yeah, they were such nice boys. Yeah. Why would they do that? Oh, by the way, I couldn't stand the movie that they made about it. There's a movie? Uh, yeah, about Sid Vicious and mm. the girlfriend. What was her name? I forgot. Not in Nancy something, something. Yeah, Sid and Nancy or something. Yeah. It was called the movie. And she has the most obnoxious voice. I, I get the irony, <laughs> guys. Yeah. Before you make comments, I get the irony of having a fucked mm. up voice. But she had just a piercing voice that made my hair stand up. I couldn't yeah. stand it. But I have to say, I never listened that super much to Sex Pistols yeah, here and there. Either. But I'm not hating it. Yeah. I think it had definitely, it painted a really great way. Yeah. They had some bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind the boss. Uh-huh. Oh, and it's comedy you're going you're shooting you're left and right and left. <laughs> this is quality programming, people. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, uh, like we said, it was quite of a slow news day, 6th of January, apparently. But say they were idiots to fire them. Oh, yeah. They were still it's cash not, cow because it was such a unique thing that it actually it's, it's not like it was a, were uh, the only sucky business decision made by a large company ever. Does M- 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 I actually still exist? I guess they do. <laughs> I couldn't be asked to check. 
But well, we clarify that next time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe we have a segment of kind of like where we fact check, or maybe people <laughs> that listen that kind of say like, okay, that was <coughs> fucked up and that was wrong. So if you say something that's fucking wrong, write into <laughs> we are not here to, to please you at gmail dot com, yeah. and we have a segment of corrections. Yeah. Or comment on our Facebook page or, or wherever. Yeah, so, and then we're going to have a whole brand new cool segment where we actually <laughs> kind of have to say, like, hey, you dicko got it wrong. <laughs> and then we can say, like, yeah, well, we got it wrong and yeah. we can clarify it. So, right in if yeah, we This are is wrong. your moment to shine, people. Yeah. yeah. But um, one last item on the 6th of January 1992. Please be tits. U.S. Hall's breast implant. Yes, tits. <laughs> yeah, fake tits, but uh, still. Anyway. So you, they hold it because, like, it's... U.S. U.S. government advises doctors to suspend the use of silicon implants. Because pending, Middle East delivered it. Pending an investigation to their safety. Well, this whole, whole thing was based on some 2,500 complaints from women experiencing pain, ill health, etc., etc. Because they and, went to Mexico and got the thing done for $200. And in the end, it um, resulted in, well, nothing, actually. There was no link pro- proven to, to show that you know breast implants would be any kind of cause of of uh, disease or anything. But didn't they after that kind of switch to this um, salt? Well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose they ended up you know, this improving, alternative, yeah. improving the implants and whatnot. I but don't know so, if improving, because have you ever touched a fake boob? I have not. We Neither must, did I. Yeah. This is something that we must arrange to, to happen on air. So if any listeners in Finland around Tampere have fake boobs, Please, one time, let's, uh, let us touch them for scientific reasons. Yes. I'm actually for, curious. For science. I haven't touched a fake boob in my life. I have no neither. So, this is your chance to, to well, for international fame, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I have to say, optical-wise, what I've seen of most fake boobs, they are definitely not my thing. Hmm. Because actually, they could shape them like looking like normal boobs. But yeah. instead, most of them go for Zeppelin balloon hybrid. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like this weird artificial looking just thing. Yeah. Plus, okay, I can't make that uh, reference in here. Like, I like mm. my boob with a little bit of <laughs> movement in there as well. Yeah. And I, um, getting back on this actual news item... I'd uh, just like to right, read... Right, I got lost in the topic of books. Yeah, tits. It got get you all worked up. But, um... Anyway, I guess this whole thing started... Uh, um, I have a book here. A very, very interesting book, which we will be touching on much, much more later. Because I still haven't done the ready research what I wanted to but add to It's it. called The Science of Fear. Uh, by Daniel, I'm afraid of what you're gonna say. Yeah, by Dan- <laughs> Daniel Gardner, a very lovely book. And um, did I just lose the fucking no? Oh, ah. I just accidentally closed the book from from where I was going to be reading. Without the bookmark. Yes, the bookmark is on the table now. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, um, lovely book. Uh, Subtitle: How the Culture of Fear Manipulates Your Brain, and I. I really, really want to say this is a... Mr. Fancy Pants, I read books. Yes, yes, they have words and everything. Artus Book Club. Yeah! It's a forthcoming segment. Yeah, tell us more, Uncle (laughs) Artu. No, but I'd just like to... Because this book, among very many other things, um, handles the, the whole breast implant scare that did take place. I so it actually had that as a topic from, yeah, it's, that, from it's, that time period. Yeah. This is in a chapter called A Story About Numbers, which basically uh, goes around explaining how, how people are rather poor with numbers, because like what I said earlier, we are cavemen with computers. A brain is made to, to, you know, to that early tribesman stuff. And no matter how smart we are, we are just not really that 
well versed with you know working with large numbers and everything like that. Oh, what you mean? Mm. Oh, uh, uh, grog hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I've now tried to work this thing in so much that it feels really stupid to start really <laughs> reading anything. But the start of this whole thing was, in 1982, an Australian report described three women with silicone breast implants and connective tissue diseases. Are there any pictures? What this meant wasn't clear. This is not a picture book. But I think if you go on Google and But type, you can't blame me. They're talking about... You're talking about the book and talking about boobs. So I want if pictures. You, if you go on Google and type silicone breast, I think you can find some pictures. You think there are any pictures? I guess you might find some. <laughs> Several be, yeah. But it was well known that implant uh, it was well known that implants could leak or rupture, but could silicone seep into the body and cause these diseases. Some were sure that was happening. I kinda remember now that this actually uh-huh. was back also uh, as a kid I remember being in a story that apparently that kinda caused infections and uh-huh. that was apparently uh-huh. always really huge scare in the media uh-huh. about it. The same year as the Australian report, a woman in San Francisco sued implant manufacturers demanding millions of dollars for making her sick. The media reported both these stories widely, raising concerns among more women and more doctors. Well, More cases appeared in the me- medical literature. The number of diseases associated with implants grew. So did the number of stories in the media fear spread. By the way, are you reading the book just so there? This was a direct excerpt from the very book. Short, short interruption about the San Francisco lady. Mm-hmm. I think she just complained because she got fake tits and no guy paid attention to her. <laughs> but it wasn't the fault of the surgeon, it's San Francisco. <laughs> Boobs yeah. are not that favorable in there. <laughs> it's still San Francisco. Well, yeah. Well, in the end, anyway, the... the Media reported the whole issue and and talk shows and everything and it just grew with the hysteria. And it in always the, grew small, mm-hmm, but hysteria uh, gets blown out of proportion yeah, so quickly. Yeah, and they did studies on this thing and and like I said, the 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 implants were banned for for a while. And in the end, it was found out that there was no link between because implants it, and these diseases. Because it would, it just so happened that these women who had silicon tits also had these diseases. Well, it also always but still, it always uh, needs only one scientist. It right. might, yeah. and over the course of like two weeks, that word might mm-hmm. disappears from his school yeah. somehow. Over all getting from media to the other media outlet to the other media yeah. outlet. At some point, it's kind of like, oh, it causes it, not it might cause mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But in the end, in the American way, this resulted in loads and loads of lawsuits, and one of the biggest manufacturers actually ended up uh, filing for bankruptcy because of this whole thing. Because of that thing, because they actually lost a shitload of yeah. trials. Oh, my God. And, and in the end, like I said, oh. Oh. there was no link between silicone and, and these diseases. My theory, by the way, about why guys like big boobs. Okay. So, when you're a kid, your head is this small amount, yeah? So, I show normal baby head size, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, comparison to that, the size of the boob you suck on. Mm. Ah. Seems equal. And I yeah. think the men stray their whole life to find the same ratio while they're growing <laughs> up. So, yeah. Come on, sounds kind of plausible. I know it's bullshit, but it's... <laughs> Technically, it's so much bullshit that it's still kind of plausible. So, if your mother had a breast that was the size of your baby head, you're going to be looking for a tip that's the size of your current head when yeah. you're an adult. So, do you remember your mom's boobs? Wait, now he kind of searches in the dark <laughs> corner. Why would you even tend to search? Do you really want to find the answer? <laughs> you know what? If you don't know the answer, that's good. Do you really want to bring the image back? Yes. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, no, well, Wait. that's a good question. Uh, probably. I don't know if I want to question that any further. Mm. Oh, 
Uh, where are you done with your boob story, by the way, for now? Well, I guess that's it for, for now. Because we're going to retouch on the on the book, The Science of Fear. Retouch on the boob. Retouch on the boob. Yeah. No, retouch on the book, Science of Fear, was yes. it? Yes. For next time, for fucking sure. But, like, about lawsuits remind me on one thing. In the moment, like, hundreds, no, actually thousands of people getting letters from lawyers in Germany. Okay. For the simple reason that they used a certain... Let's call it video portal. Mm-hmm. It's the innocent name of Red Tube. Right. That deals in adult videos, entertainment, e- educational materials. Yeah, <laughs> in procreation and ex- educational materials. Yes. yes. Also known as porn. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, but like uh, they actually kind. I- I think most of our listeners probably figured that out. Yeah, I think by now, yeah. At the point where you mentioned Red Tube, that was pretty much... Well, it headed to a girl. Big of a tip. Well, yeah. Yeah, only the guys know that one. They'll they'll just look like they don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, like x Tube 8 and... Okay, I should stop talking now. Yeah, just stop your name dropping. By the way, the most... The genius move from a porn website ever for free porn was you porn, just deriving from YouTube. You know, kind of. I think mm. that's. I think it was a clever move. But anyhow, back on the subject. Anyhow, like this um, lawyer group, kind of. I, I don't even know who they represent, but they give a bunch of people a citation letters mm-hmm. like that. They have to pay two hundred fifty euros because of copyright infringement. Because right, for using r- red tube, yeah, because they watch technically illegally porn. Technically, you know, it's not mm-hmm. illegal to watch stuff. Yeah, it's illegal to download it or to upload it. That's the wow. current state of the law in Germany. If you download it and share it, you incriminate yourself. Right, and it's in the moment kind of they are really kind of finally fighting in front of the courts, kind of like mm-hmm. if it's not right or not because. Technically, you buffer the file on your yeah. PC while you're streaming it. Yes. So technically, you're downloading it. Yes. Like, no, one, lo- uh, one just says, like, no, it's not. The other one says, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, apparently, they got the information of the users in a kind of sketchy way, okay. where they also investigate in the, ma- in the moment if it was even lawful. Right. How they got into onto the information of the users <sighs> that use that services. It's not anymore even safe to watch a bit porn on the internet without getting fucking pe- uh, slapped on the wrist. Yeah. Slapped on the wrist. Not even Mr. Cock. Mm, There's a yeah. damn payment letter. But how rude is that? Yeah, that's not right. That's just wrong. Well, my first thought was like. Did I ever in the last couple of years, when I still lived in Germany, use Red Tube? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, are you going to be receiving a letter from, from Germany? Luckily, I used other, I mean, no outlets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's getting really, really ridiculous with the fucking lawsuits over, over copyrights. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's just not the way to go. I think Sweden has kind of this really... Do not Sweden has one of the really softest laws in that point? Yeah, I suppose so. The Germans are really badass about it. Mm. You know that you can go to up to five years in prison <gasps> for copyright infringement. Mm-hmm. By the way, there are really nasty commercial spots in front of movies. Right? What does they remember from like five years ago? Like a family walking up and starting to sing happy birthday. Yeah. And then they show they sing towards a wall from a prison. And the father's in the window. Right. Like, really fucking super dark. You know, I was just about to watch a comedy or something, mm-hmm. you know. It's like, yeah, well, great prison shit. Yeah. And just for some people that are wanking, you know. Yeah. Is that really worth it? Mm-hmm. But, by the way, that spawned a really huge wave of, of course, spam. Yeah. Emails after that. Fake. <laughs> fake lawyer letters and emails and shit like that mm, of course well of course yeah i actually actually i got to two years ago was the last time i received it i received each year for three years in a row mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. a fake letter of like, hey, you use that service and you owe us <laughs> that money. Right. Nothing happened. Next year, the same letter. Mm-hmm. I would mm. love to know if it was even a good service. <laughs> And by the way, where are the all these good-looking women in my area, apparently, that pop in left and right on my <laughs> browser screen now? I don't believe that. Uh, oh, well. Now, well we, now we kind of ran out of steam. Yeah, but I think we ran a good time, one and a half hours. You know, actually, there are one and a half hours that we can use because we didn't start to... We didn't have a drinking game this time, which might have something to do with it. Yeah, the next drinking game should be definitely not with 40% booze. Maybe not. And maybe space the questions out a bit more. Possibly. And maybe stop drinking at some point. (laughs) We have a spectator here in the room. (laughs) Intruder! Intruder! Exterminate! (laughs) No, but I think we're good for today. Yeah. Now comes foreign. Uh, <laughs> well, and we have now as a musical outro from Fate to Casualty. They just dropped their new single with a couple of good remixes mm-hmm. from the song Somewhere in the Middle. I think just came out like a week or two weeks ago. Yeah. Alright, so. So enjoy that, and you're gonna find all the relatable links, like how you find it on Bandcamp and their web address and everything. You'll find it on our blog on We Are Not Here to Please You at blogspot.fi. And that is We Are Not Here to Please You. Wish you a good day. And Happy New Year. Bye bye. Bye bye.